guys welcome to another video you've got mr everything english and today we are doing structure the hardest question the most overcomplicated question let's make it easy let's make it simple let's begin everything education tuition for maths english and science so guys, when it comes to the structure question we should know this by now that this is an eight mark question which means we are spending 10 minutes on this question and in old school fashion, in 10 minutes, guys, we are looking to write 10, 10. We are looking to write two pretzel paragraphs. Now, this question, guys, is the same every single year. First things first, we are looking at the entire source and it is asking us to look at how does the writer use structure to interest the reader. Now, before we begin, I want to talk about this word over here. And this is the word interest. Don't let that word throw you off there has never in the history of writing unless it was a widow there has never in the history of writing been a writer who's written with the intention of making their book boring everyone writes for interest interest could be anything now guys you gotta fake it you gotta make it out as though the source that aqa has given you is the most amazing thing in the world it creates interest because it makes the reader, I don't know, breathe faster. It makes the reader want to know what happens next. It makes the reader want to go and save the day. Just make up an interest point. Don't over hype it because everything is there to create interest. But we're looking at how does the writer use structure to create interest. Now, this is where students get stuck because not enough students know structural devices and the way that i look at structural devices is as follows guys there are two types of structural devices that i look at the first type is the bulletproof list and the second type is our stretch list now for the bulletproof side what do i say i say that no matter what happens in your exam these structural devices are coming up I will give each of you a hundred pound. Come find me guys, Google everything education, find out where you can find me and come see me if these don't come up. And I will give you a hundred pound cash because I know 100,000% that these eight structured devices are coming up no matter what happens because they come up every single year and they will come up this year again. Now, what are these eight structural devices? These are the eight that will come up no matter what happens. In your insert, in source A, there will be a long sentence. And because there is a long sentence, there will be a short sentence. There will be a long paragraph. There will definitely be a short paragraph. Then, guys, the writers will always zoom in in detail and talk about something. And when they zoom in, they will always zoom out because the whole extract is never just about one particular thing. And the moment they zoom out, they will also shift the focus. They may go from talking about Mr. Fisher to the snow outside. And finally, guys, there will always be something new that is introduced. This could be a new character, a new setting, a new day, a new time. Something new will always come. So nobody can come out of the exam and say to me, sir, I couldn't find structural devices because I have given you eight that come up every single year. And then on this side, we have the stretch ones. These are ones that are very common, but are a little bit more difficult to find. What are they? You have foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is when you give clues about things that may happen in the future. You have flashback. And this is when the writer refers to events that happened in the past. Then we have repetition guide. This is when you repeat a word or a phrase over and over again. And then we have a list. A list is four plus more. Anything below four is called rule of three but anything for and more is known as a list. Dialogue guys is when people are talking. Juxtaposition as a structural device is when there's a contrast. So maybe the first paragraph contrasts the last paragraph. Then we have media res. This is when the writing begins in the heart of the action. And finally guys, we have pathetic fallacy as a structural device. This is when the weather continues on for a longer moment of time. Now, this is what we have to speak about in our writing. And all of it, guys, is wrapped up using what? It is wrapped up using a pretzel paragraph. 
So we start with a point, then we give our quote, then we pick our technique, then we explain the effect, then we zoom in, we explain the effect, and we link everything back together. Now my rule is this, guys, I tell students, when it comes to your first technique, try to pick something from this side, and when you zoom in, try to pick something from this side. It just makes life easy. But if you can't find anything from this side, doing two from this side is absolutely fine. But I just like to split it, one from here and one from here. Now there's one important thing I wanna say here, guys, for this question. When you are referring here, I want you all to talk about lines. Don't give me quotes, give me lines. Say lines five to 10, lines four to eight. Uh, push guys, don't quote more than five lines. Stick it to five. Five is a good amount. Don't do this for any other question other than this one. Why are we referring to lines? Because imagine we're gonna talk about a long sentence or if we're gonna talk about a juxtaposition or we're gonna talk about repetition. We haven't got time to be quoting and writing out three, four lines. So you wanna make sure you're quoting a chunk and saying from lines five to line eight, from lines four to line nine. Secondly, structure is a lot more spread out. So if you're just gonna quote five words, it's gonna be very hard to find two structural devices in five words. So to make life easy for you, when you're referring to lines, refer to a decent amount of lines so you're able to find two devices in the same reference. Now, that being said, what's the mark scheme for this question? For those of you who watched the video on question number two, you're gonna see that nothing has changed. We are marked on the same three things over and over again. We're marked on our range of examples. This here, guys, is talking about our referencing, is talking about our quotes. This one here, guys, subject terminology, this is talking about our techniques because words like foreshadowing, words like zooming in, words like flashback, these are English specific words. You're not going to be using this in French or geography. And then we have to explain the effect. And that is the last thing that we do. And as I explained earlier, that is why pretzel works so well. Because in a typical pretzel paragraph, you have quotations twice. Once in your first reference and then when you zoom in. In a pretzel paragraph, you are giving two techniques. One after the first reference and another when you zoom in. And in a pretzel paragraph, you are giving two effects. One for the first technique and one for when you zoom in. So if you follow pretzel, you take off the mark scheme without realizing it. Now the question guys, as always, is to get eight marks. You must do this in detail and you must do this perceptively. Detail looks at how much you're writing. Are you writing enough to warrant a good mark for this question? Secondly, a lot of kids will say that just because I wrote enough, I deserve a high mark. It doesn't work like that. It now the word perceptive checks the quality of your work. Now, can you be detailed and perceptive in your quote? No, you can't. Can you be detailed and perceptive in your technique? No, you can't. The only part of the paragraph that you can be detailed and perceptive is your effect. That is why for this question, guys, you must make sure that your effect is in good detail. Now, let's do a quick recap, guys. For this question, we're referring to the whole of the source. We're looking at how the writer has used structure to create interest. We're doing two pretzel paragraphs and we're, we're referring to lines, maximum five. And in the first technique, try to pick out one of these. And when you zoom in, try to pick out one of these. Now, somebody might say to you, oh, but two paragraphs is not enough. As I did last time, guys, here is a model paragraph that was published by AQA. It was not written by me. And as you can see, guys, this student has written two paragraphs where they analyze the impact of structure. In these two paragraphs, guys, this student speaks about shift in focus. They speak about the juxtaposition. 
but it's a clear example that two clear paragraphs is more than enough for this question. You don't have to speak about beginning and the middle and the end. Now guys, let's go to the extract and let's plan one paragraph. So here's our insert and we're looking at how does the writer use structure to create interest and we can use the entire insert. We can, we can use literally a quote from anywhere. And the part that I'm going to use guys is the following from line 35 to the end. So my, for my reference guys, for my reference, I will use line 35 to 6, 7, 8, 6, 7, 8 to line 38 guys. This is my reference. And for my point, I'm going to say that the writer creates interest by highlighting how Mr. Fister's, Fisher's reaction is extremely unusual. And for my, for my technique, I'm going to talk about how the writer uses the technique of the position because this all contrasts Mr. Fisher's behavior at the top. And this is going to be my technique. And when I zoom in, I'm literally going to talk about the technique of zooming in and how the writer zooms in to Mr. Fisher's body to show the impact that this book has had on him. So imagine guys, we're doing pretzel, P, R, T, E, Z, E and L. I've got my point, I've got my reference, I've got my technique and I've got my zooming in. Now remember guys, if we're going here, one of my techniques was juxtaposition. I picked it from this side and I'm zooming in to the technique of zooming in and how it really zooms in to Mr. Fisher's being. Now in your exam guys, all you got to do is plan and write two paragraphs like this. You have four minutes to plan, 10 minutes to write. And do you see guys how I quoted lines and not words? And I went through it. Now how I structure this response, I may say something like in the extract, Mr. Fisher's, sorry, the writer creates interest by showing how Mr. Fisher's reaction to the book was extremely unusual. This can be seen on lines 35 to 38 and the writer uses juxtaposition. And I, I'll explain how it's the first time in the entire extract that Mr. Fisher appears to come to life. So far in the whole extract, this guy was dead. This guy was finished, but now he's finally coming to life. I'll talk about that and then I'll zoom in to how the writer literally zooms in to Mr. Fisher and talks about his diaphragm and how his body is changing from within. And it shows us how this book is a lifeline. It is giving him a second chance at living. I'll explain all of that, end the paragraph and do one more. And that's it guys. That is literally what you're aiming for in your exam. So let's recap one more time. Paper one, question number three, 10 minutes, two paragraphs. And you're looking at how the writer uses structure to create interest. Structure means structural devices. These are eight bulletproof devices that are coming up in your exam no matter what happens. These are eight stretch devices that are not always there, but they normally are, but they're less obvious to spot. My advice is do two pretzel paragraphs, one technique over here, and when you zoom in, go over here. Both of these techniques are found in the same reference so if you choose lines five to eight or lines 10 to 15, both of these techniques are found in those lines. Make sure you're doing effect, make sure you're doing referencing and make sure you're giving techniques. All you gotta do guys is follow pretzel and you will be good. As you can see over here guys, here's an example of two paragraphs that got eight out of eight. And in your exam guys, all you would do is you would plan two pretzel paragraphs here's one that i've planned just now and you will simply write it out in your exam shall we do one more paragraph just so you guys can see yeah come on then. let's do one more paragraph let's look at these lines here so for our reference guys yes let's use 10 line 12 to 15. so line 12 to line 15 that's gonna be our reference so we have our second quote And when it comes to our technique, let's talk about how the writer has used a list of six here, guys. 
because the writer says that there were heroes, dragons, dinosaurs, space adventures, soldiers of fortune and giant apes. There are six examples that are given. Always be specific about your list. And I'm going to talk about how when I zoom in, I'm going to talk about a flashback. And that is what I'm going to use for zooming in. And how does the writer create interest? The writer creates interest by presenting these books as being absolutely amazing. And there you have another paragraph planned. My point was that books were amazing. My reference was lines 12 to 15. My technique was the list of six, which shows you how there's so many reasons why these books were amazing. And when I zoom in, I'm going to zoom in to the flashback, which shows that Mr. Fisher is still living in the past. That is how you do paper one, question number three. My advice to you guys is if you're doing some revision, write out the two paragraphs that I planned, five minutes per paragraph and see how you get on and then complete lots of past papers. Go to loads of question threes. Plan two paragraphs, write out two paragraphs and repeat. Write out two paragraphs and repeat. The main thing guys is your effect. Make sure when you do your effect, you dig deep. Think about what is the effect of my effect and start questioning what you're saying. And that will allow you to dig deeper in your analysis. All right guys, next video will be on paper one, question number four. Everything education, tuition for maths, English and science.